So this is number 10 in Web Sign, number 31 in chapter 24 of Sir William Jewett, edition number 9, ninth edition of the Physics for Scientists and Engineers textbook. So here we're asked to look at a, not an infinite, but a finite long rod, long, long, not necessarily rod, but long, thin, thin rod. Thin is the key word there. Uh, for me, the length of this is 7.3 meters, and it has a total positive charge. Uh, so the charge, the, the rod is charged positively everywhere, and Q on the entire rod is 2 microcoulombs. Okay. And then we place a, a tiny cardboard tube around it. So I'm not going to draw it to scale, but, but this is long. This is 7 meters, and our cardboard tube is only three centimeters in length. So again, not drawn to scale. And the whole reason that we can think about this as a tiny cardboard tube, this is not my Gaussian surface, but I'm going to treat it like it is. This is a cardboard tube. And that is incidentally where we're going to put our Gaussian. Um, the reason we can, we can use Gauss's law here is we are ignoring the edge effects. So imagine this, this line here stretches out really, really far. Obviously, 7 meters is much, much bigger than 3 centimeters. So this, for all practical purposes, is an infinitely long rod compared to our, to our cardboard cylinder. And the cylinder has a uh, length. This length here is L. And it's uh, 0 0.3, sorry, uh, 3.4. Uh, meters, 0 0.034 meters or 3.4 centimeters. And the radius of this tube, if you will, R is 10 centimeters, so 0 0.1 meters. And what we're looking for is approximately what is the electric field out here at the edge of the cardboard. Okay, so because our rod is really long, the electric field is going to be vertically, uh, radially outward, I should say. Okay, and because it's positive, it's going to be pointing away. And also, there are electric field lines coming everywhere, pointing in and out of the page as well. So here's the electric field, and then if we look at a little tiny differential piece of area up here at the top, for example, that dA is parallel, and a little piece of area down here is also parallel to the electric field, which is pointing away. <clears throat> um, so what we're looking for, uh, and I guess we should, we should, uh, I know what's coming, and so it might be beneficial to look at the, at the, linear density of this. Oftentimes we're given what the linear density is, but here we're given the length and the charge. So if you're if you're given those things, you're probably going to need the linear density. Um, you don't have to have it. You can always substitute it in, but it's helpful if you just go ahead and calculate it. And we know this is the charge per unit length, which for, for me is 10, 2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs over 7.3 meters. Let's do that calculation. To, oops, turn it on, 2e negative 6 divided by 7.3. And that gets us a value of 2.74 times 10 to the minus 7 coulombs per meter. This is our density, and again, it's uniform. Okay. Um, the area here of our Gaussian surface. So let's let's put our Gaussian where that cardboard tube is because we're interested in finding the electric field at that cardboard tube. So let's make that be our Gaussian. And so if we were to unfold it, what we would get is we would get a little area here on the side, and that would be our little radius r, this guy here. And then we would unfold the wrapper and it would look like a cylinder. And then you would have the bottom here which also has radius r, or the, the left and the, and the right, and then the middle wrapper. So this piece here will wrap around, and this edge here is the circumference of the top and the circumference of the bottom. And so uh, this length here we know is L. We know this guy here is 2 pi r, the circumference of our end. 
And so the area of that middle part is 2 pi r l, where l is the length of our Gaussian in our cardboard tube. All right, so what is the flux? So the total flux is the flux through the left plus the flux through the middle surface plus the flux through the right surface. And we know that that's equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. So the flux to the left and the flux to the right are both zero because the area is pointing perpendicular to the electric field on both of those surfaces. So the only flux that survives is this middle flux. And again, we've seen it time and time again. Uh, the electric field is constant everywhere along that middle part, and so we can pull it out of the integral. And because E and DA are parallel to each other, the dot product becomes a 1. And so what we end up with is just simply E times the area. And again, what we're looking for, the only area that survives, is the area of this middle wrapper. Is equal to the charge enclosed. Now this is important to understand. This is not the charge of the entire rod. Remember, the entire rod goes, you know, infinitely long, or 7.3 meters, practically infinitely long. What we're looking at is the charge enclosed by the Gaussian. So all we care about is the charge here. Okay? But because the density is uniform, okay, we know that lambda is equal to the charge enclosed over that length. And that length is little script L. Okay? So therefore, Q enclosed is equal to lambda times that little tiny length there. So we can plug that in here over epsilon naught. Our area we just found out was 2 pi r over L, or sorry, times L, 2 pi little r times L is equal to lambda L over epsilon naught. The L's cancel. We're going to calculate what our E is here. Just solving that guy for E. And notice this is 1 over R dependence. This is not like a point mass. Okay. So um, all of these charges distributed throughout reinforce this guy here. And so it does not drop off nearly as fast as a point mass does. Point mass drops off as 1 over r squared, recall. All right, where are we? Are we time ready to plug in? I think we are. So we know what lambda is. We calculated that earlier. If you didn't calculate that, uh, if you didn't think to do that beforehand, then you all you have to do is realize that, oh, lambda is just q over l. And you know q and you know l, big L. So you know that value. You don't have to do it a priori. But since we do know it, we can just write it in. Two pi epsilon naught, that's just a constant. And the radius here is the radius of our of our area of our Gaussian surface and our that area R is 0 0.1 meters. Okay. And so you can watch me type it in if you want to. Oh, look at that. We can just use the, the lambda from the time before. So we're just going to divide that by all of this here. Don't forget parentheses. So 2 pi epsilon naught. That's alpha E for me. I've saved that as my constant times 0 0.1. And again, it's not squared. Okay. So this gives me 4.93 times 10 to the 4. And this is going to be um, newtons per uh, coulomb. But of course, Webassign does not want that. It wants kilonewtons per coulomb, so this is going to equal 49.3 kilonewtons per coulomb. And because the charges are all positive, it's going to be radially outward. So let's see if we get that right. 49.3 and radially outward. Yay. And now, what is the total electric flux of the cylinder? So, the electric flux 
is this this whole line here. The left hand side is the flux and the right hand side is the flux. So we could calculate it either way. In fact, let's let's do that. Let's let's calculate both ways just to make sure we get it right. So the left hand side is the electric field, which is what we just found here. I'll just write it down just for shakes. So the electric field is 4.9 times 10 to the 4. The area we know is 2 pi. R is 0 0.1 meters. And L is 0 0.034 meters. Watch that zero there. So that's what the flux is on the left-hand side. Let's see what the right-hand side is. It's going to be lambda, and we've calculated that. Okay. And then times L, again, is 0 0.034 meters. And then we divide that by epsilon naught. So you can trust me or not, but I promise you it's going to give you the same answer. And let's just let's just see it. I'm going to use that number there from the time before. So times two pi times point one. Uh, I'll go ahead and do it right. Times zero point zero three four, and we get this left-hand side is 1.05 times 10 to the third. Again, I'm in scientific notation here. And this is um, of the units of Newton's meters squared over Coulomb squared is the unit of flux. And let's see what happens when we do this over here. So 2.74 e minus 7. 0, 3, 4, divided by, and woohoo, 1.053, I'll put a 3 in there just to, just to brag a little bit, times 10 to the third, same units, and this, of course, is 1,053. So let's see if that's right. Here it's looking for like that. Hooey. Hopefully you're getting the hang of all these problems and if you're bored with them then I think you're probably done. But let's keep going.